Hello and welcome to another Magic 2015 gameplay. Today we are taking a look at Jeskai Burn, a blue, red and white burn deck. And that is because of the new addition of Warden of the Eye, a 5-mana 3-3 that returns a non-creature, non-land card from your graveyard to your hand. So very comparable to Archaeomancer, but for one additional mana we do get a 3-3 instead of a 1-2. So I think he's worth the inclusion. And then of course from the new DLC we also got Mystic Monastery to help out our mana base quite a bit. So let's take a look at the deck real quick. Um, we are not running Kiln Fiend, which typical burn decks might. Uh, so we're also not running the card that makes your creatures unblockable. Instead we're having a bigger spell heavy approach and maybe relying less on our creatures to finish off the game. So let's take a look at Vapor Snag here, one of our three blue cards being Think Twice Vapor Snag and the Warden. And Vapor Snag is just an excellent cheap interactive card that can deal with annoying uh, enchantment decks for example. It can also be used against big creatures to gain a big tempo advantage and also deals one damage to the opponent. So just an excellent cheap card. Then we've got Think Twice for some card advantage, triggers our creatures twice like Young Pyromancer and Gutter Snipe and uh, gives us some late game staying power. Then we've got Banefire which is an excellent finisher and you can also use it earlier if you really have to on a creature for example. Uh, but yeah if you can save up some mana and cast a Banefire for 5 or more it's also uncounterable and damage can't be prevented. Not super relevant, but it can happen. Then we've got Shock, another cheap interactive card that can also go to the face. So another very good one mana instant. Then we've got Young Pyromancer, which is one of the few creatures in the deck. But Young Pyromancer is just such a powerful card. You only need to trigger him a couple of times to get a lot of value out of him. And there's not many cards in the format that punish you for going wide. Only cards like Anger of the Gods do, but uh, you can only deploy one creature and still get an entire army going. So even if they cast an Anger of the Gods, it's still a one for one. So Young Pyromancer, just an excellent creature. And then we've got Volcanic Geyser as our Banefire number three and four. Uh, it's a little less powerful because the X is also accompanied by two red mana symbols instead of one. But we do get it at instant speed instead of being a sorcery, which is quite relevant. Although I would prefer it to uh, just be another Banefire. Then we've got Skullcrack as a 3 damage burn spell that also prevents any life gain from the opponent. So if they're about to cast Palaka Worm, you can Skullcrack them in response and then they don't get any life. Which is pretty relevant if you're trying to burn them out. Then we've got Anger of the Gods, which might be a strange inclusion in a deck that's also running Young Pyromancer. But I do like Anger of the Gods sort of as a catch-all um, sort of answer against a lot of strategies that are trying to go wide. This is one of the few ways to punish them. And uh, if you do have Young Pyromancer and Anger of the Gods in your opener, you can always elect to cast the Anger first and then deploy the Young Pyromancer. Uh, so a lot of flexibility and a lot of power in this one card. Then we've got a Gutter Snipe as our other creature that is very valuable because you don't even need to attack with him to deal extra damage. So dealing 2 extra damage whenever you cast an instant or sorcery means suddenly your Skullcrack is dealing 5 instead of 3 and your Shocks are dealing 4. So that can uh, scale up pretty quickly. And Gutter Snipe can also attack and block, besides having a very powerful effect. Then we've got Bolt of Keranos, which is an interesting inclusion. Uh, we're running a Bolt of Keranos instead of the other instant speed 3 mana burn spells. Uh, because the double red should not be a problem in this deck, because we are running a lot of mountains and a lot of red sources. So the Scry 1 is actually quite relevant, getting to look at our top card and putting it on the bottom if we don't want it is a pretty interesting ability and in a burn deck that's just trying to look for that additional burn spell can be very useful so that's why I'm running the bolt in this deck 
Then we've got some more creatures here in Stormbreath Dragon. Just go to the face and if our opponent doesn't find an answer, can just win the game. And can also go monstrous. So just another very powerful creature. Then we've got Inferno Titan as another sweeper effect, plus another removal spell, plus another finisher. Just does it all and is an excellent addition in any red deck. And that's no different here. And then finally the Warden to rebuy or burn spells. And it's very important for the Warden to have some cheap targets like Vapor Snag and Shock. Because that means if for turn 6 for example you can play the Warden, get those back and play those right away. And uh, if you can rebuy a Banefire, you can Banefire for 5 maybe, play the Warden, Banefire for 5 again. And uh, that should be enough to kill most opponents. Then the mana base, we are running 3 Boros Guildgate, the full amount of Izzet Guildgate. Then 2 Azorius Guildgate and 3 Mystic Monastery. So that gives us 12 tap lands, which is a lot. Uh, but we are a more controlling deck, we don't have to play our 2 drop on 2 for example. And then we've got a 9 mountains, 2 islands and 1 plains. So plenty of red sources to uh, cast those double red spells. And blue and white are just splash colors, so that should not be a problem. Alright, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opening hand. Which looks like a good old a regular is it burn opener. And uh, you can believe me, we're still playing the Jeskai deck. And I think this is a solid keep. We have Young Pyromancer and Think Twice. And some shocks for removal, just all you really want. We do have to draw some more lands here, but for now let's play a mountain and pass the turn. Let's see what the opponent's up to. Has a lad with uh, an island into a plains and squadron hawk. All right. Now this is interesting. We could shock it, but I think we want to gain more value out of it by casting the young pyromancer first. And blue white should not really have that much removal for the young pyromancer, so I'm all right running it out there without any spell to cast in response of removal. Opponent's gonna attack for one most likely and play another Squadron Hawk to block the Young Pyromancer, which we can then probably just shock the Squadron Hawk and attack. Alright, instead it's a Scroll Thief. I guess we'll end up Vapor Snagging that. Hmm, this is interesting. I would like to cast a Think Twice to draw a card to hit our land drop, but I do sort of have to get rid of this Scroll Thief here because I don't want our opponent drawing more cards. This also gets us in for some damage. And uh, then we can also shock a Squadron Hawk to get another Elemental token. And go on the aggressive. And then if the opponent wants to replay the scroll thief and attack with it, then we can attack back with our elemental tokens. So unfortunate that we did not hit our land drop here. Um, and I think if our opponent attacks with the squadron hawk, uh, we let it happen. So in case our opponent plays a creature, we would rather shock end of turn, we can do that. And instead is gonna play another Squadron Hawk, which is good. I would rather have him play the Squadron Hawk than the Scroll Thief here. And another one. So I guess he attacks with the Squadron Hawk. So I guess we can kill the one that's attacking to prevent some damage. And I'm not gonna attack with the Young Pyromancer anyways. I'm only gonna attack with the Elemental Tokens. And I'm okay with trading the elemental token for the uh, for the squadron hawk. All right. Still no lands, so I think I will think twice here to draw one. Hopefully, so let's attack with the elemental tokens first, since they're not gonna block anyways. And let's see how the opponent trades. He does not. 
All right. So if your opponent goes and plays a Bident of Thassa here next turn, I would have liked to keep up Shock to kill one of the Hawks. But I think we do need to try and hit a land drop. Given that we have two gutter snipes in hand. All right, perfect. So now we have Shock up and hit our land drop. So the best of both worlds. So let's see if our opponent does have the Bident of Thassa here, uh, which lets him draw a card whenever he deals combat damage with the creature. Doesn't look like it. So it's just going to attack for two. And I think we let this happen uh, again to keep up shock for maybe a better target. I don't think the two damage is going to be super relevant. It's going to replay Scroll Thief, which makes sense. And has got one squ Squadron Hawk left, which I guess I'll go ahead and shock here. We could keep the shock in hand for Gutter Snipe. Um, but... I want to be as mana efficient as possible here, given that we're on only three lands. Interesting. So, how do we sequence this? We've got at least six points of burn in hand, and Gutter Snipe does amplify that, although we don't have infinite amount of time. Um, I do kind of want to attack with all our elemental tokens, even though we then lose one to the uh, Scroll Thief. But I would like to keep maybe an elemental token back to block in case he wants to attack with it. So that means I want to have at least an instant or sorcery I can play here. Huh. So maybe... Although maybe just playing Gutter Snipe is better, given that our opponent is not killing us anytime soon. Yeah, I guess I like playing Gutter Snipe here. Then the question is, do we still attack with our 1-1s or not? And I think we do. Getting him for 3 seems relevant. They're not going to block many creatures anyways. And I'm not too afraid of Planar Cleansing out of the blue-white Trixie deck. So yeah, let's just play Gutter Snipe and keep back Gutter Snipe to block the Scroll Thief. If our opponent bounces this, that's fine. Then we probably get to attack with the Young Pyromancer, unless he doesn't attack with the Squadron Hawks. Could have the Binding of Thassa this turn, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Baneslayer Angel could also be a problem, but we do have two Skull Cracks to manage the life gain. Alright, so there's a Vapor Snag on the Gutter Snipe, which I guess is a minor setback. Just because we're pitched on uh, mana here. But if he does attack, he does need to make a blocker for the Young Pyromancer. I'm not gonna jump in front of the Scroll Thief. Our opponent can go ahead and draw another card. And let's see if he has a follow-up. Doesn't look like it could have instant speed creatures here to put in front of our young pyromancer um, but I think we can attack here we still have instants we can respond with and dealing five is very relevant all right our opponent takes it let's play our guild gate and now the question is do we replay gutter snipe or do we keep up skull crack or maybe even think twice. I think I want to make a blocker for the Scroll Thief if it attacks. And I don't want to run into another Vapor Snag or Buster Might. So I think I'll just pause the turn here. Let's see what the opponent does. And does nothing. Great. So did not use 5 mana. Goes to combat. And let's see if he attacks. With the Scroll Thief, he does. And looks like... Alright, everyone's coming in. One staying back. Alright, I think we can... Let's see. We can Skull Crack, Skull Crack, and probably win. So yeah, let's just Skull Crack. See if our opponent has a counter spell, maybe. 
we get our token regardless and our token can jump in front of scroll thief to prevent uh, an extra draw we still take one from the squadron hawk and let's see what the opponent has here nothing all right i guess we go for an all-out attack and uh, then we still have a skull crack left attack with everyone opponent has pester might all right it's gonna target the scroll thief i guess that's still fine as we still get through for at least one point of damage So that's all fine. But I do wanna cast these instants before the young Pyromancer dies. Because then we get still some additional tokens. So I'm gonna lead with Think Twice as a bait. Doesn't look like our opponent has a counter spell, so let's go ahead and cast a skull crack. And unless our opponent has a counter spell here, that should be enough to kill him with the attack from the unblocked token. And there we go, alright. Managed to defeat the Squadron Hawks thanks to mostly the Young Pyromancer there being uncontested. Alright, let's move on to another game. Alright, let's take a look at our opening hand, which looks pretty good. So we've got a Think Twice for the early game, we can always use the Geyser as removal. And we've got an Inferno Titan to uh, finish things off. Let's lead with our try land and pass. And see what the opponent's up to. I'm probably just gonna play a basic on two so we can cast a thing twice. And uh, probably also basic on three to flash it back. And a third basic makes that a pretty easy decision. So let's pause the turn. I guess we could have played the island to fake a uh, counter spell, but I don't think that's very relevant. Our opponent leads with a Selesnya Guildgate into a plane, so could have a raise the alarm end of turn here. But uh, I'm just gonna cast a thing twice. Shock's a decent draw. And another thing twice, so. Hmm. Maybe we do just play the guild gate and cast a thing twice instead of flashing one back. Although flashing one back is pretty mana efficient. Yeah, I think I'll just go for the uh, flashback one. I don't think we have any turn four plays we really have to make, so... Alright, opponent did not have raise the alarm end of turn there. So could still be on a different deck and Mentor of the Meek is a prime target for shock. But we can uh, flashback Think Twice first. Alright. So now we can play a Guild Gate. And then cast a Shock on the Mentor. And I think I'll do it now. Because I don't want the opponent drawing any extra cards with him. And then we can keep up Think Twice end of turn again. And we probably uh, know our opponents on some sort of token deck so if we ever draw into anger of the gods that's gonna be pretty sweet beastmaster ascension all right usually you want to keep this in your hand until you do have a board a presence already so uh, you can attack and get the counters right away but now we do know it's on the battlefield so we pretty much have to remove every creature our opponent plays but I don't think that's going to be a problem with Inferno Titan. So let's pause the turn here. We have a flashback thing twice in the graveyard, plus a whole bunch of instants we can play. And our opponent doesn't have any creatures in play yet. We can always use this Volcanic Geyser as removal. Bane Slayer Angels, not bad. Um, so let's see, I think I just cast a thing twice here. So Baneslayer Angel means that we will probably have to kill it with Volcanic Geyser. But we need an additional land to do that. So the question now is, do we just play the Inferno Titan? Um, we could do that. Another option here is playing Gutter Snipe, keep up Skullcrack. 
so our opponent doesn't gain any life of the lifelink from the Baneslayer Angel. Skullcrack preventing the life gain is pretty sweet. Yeah, I think I like that line a little bit more than just running out Inferno Titan. So let's do that. Gutter Snipe and we can play the Mystic Monastery here. And pass the turn. Our opponent will get a counter on the Beastmaster Ascension, but that's not the end of the world. Then we can geyser away the Painslayer Angel and hopefully get some value out of Inferno Titan by killing some tokens. Alright, doubling season. Our opponent's going big with the enchantments, but if he doesn't have any uh, token makers, those cards are pretty useless. So, Skullcrack here. Opponent takes 5 thanks to Gutter Snipe and doesn't gain 5, so that's a uh, 10 life swing, which is pretty great. But we still do take 5 from the Angel, of course. And their opponent has 3 cards left, 1 mana, could have a God's Willing, but I don't think uh, many token decks do run God's Willing. So I think I just take my chances here. Doubling Season also, doubling the counters on Beastmaster Ascension is not irrelevant. So yeah, I think we just play a land here and go for the Geyser, killing the Angel. And hopefully this resolves. It seems like it does. Alright, opponent takes two from Gutter Snipe, plus an attack for two here. Putting the opponent down to 11. And hopefully Inferno Titan will be enough to stabilize. Although Doubling Season is a scary card. So if we want to draw Anger of the Gods, we probably have to do it now before the Beastmaster Ascension kicks in. And there's a spider spawning. Alright, an unusual inclusion in a green-white deck. But making four tokens here, pretty good. So opponent can attack next turn. And that will put enough counters on this to um, a mess with our plans. So let's see. Um, this needs seven counters. So um, two more creatures can attack. That puts six counters on this. So we pretty much have to kill two tokens this turn. Um, and Inferno Titan unfortunately only kills one. Um, maybe we can attack with the Gutter Snipe and maybe be fancy and maybe your opponent blocks. But I think it's more likely to just cast a thing twice and draw into uh, maybe an Anger of the Gods. So let's try that. Opponent also taking two is not irrelevant. And there's a Vapor Snag, which is pretty great. Although... Um, it still gives the opponent enough counters to uh, trigger the Ascension. So we would have to cast Think Twice into another removal spell. So let's go ahead and do that. And hopefully it's a shock or something cheap we can cast. It's a warden, which is good, but in this board state, not really what we need. So I think we're in trouble here. Um, so what's gonna happen? Our opponent attacks with four tokens, triggers the ascension. They all get plus five, plus five. We can bounce one of them, block the other one. Opponent goes down to um, four life. And we can cast Inferno Titan, dealing three to the opponent. He's at one. Otherwise, we can cast the Warden, returning Skullcrack. But that's also not enough. So I think we'll have to top deck here. Or we can attack with Gutter Snipe. But yeah, no, then we're dead to the Spiders. So we have to keep him on defense. And pretty much hope for the best. So yeah, opponent attacks with everyone, triggers the ascension. We can block one. Bounce another one. Still triggering the gutter snipe. Opponent takes one from vapor snag, two from gutter snipe. And we take 12, go down to three life. And our opponent plays a Soul of Zendikar, which is irrelevant as we're trying to burn him out here. 
and we draw a young pyromancer which let's see can make some blockers um let's see we can cast warden play young pyromancer and yeah we maybe vapor snack does it let's see let's start by casting the warden get back vapor snag then we can play young pyromancer play a mountain and pause a turn yeah I think this could be good enough we have to make sure to all right banisher priest messes with our plan here we needed uh, the additional blocker and now this yeah so if our opponent did not have banisher priest we vapor snag one of the tokens we have three blockers thanks to the elemental token 43 creatures and then play inferno titan opponents has three and we kill them but now banisher priest uh, means we uh, do not get to do that so let's cast a vapor snag here kill one of the tokens but now the opponent gets to exile one of our creatures and gets to attack with all of them and unfortunately that's gonna be enough for him to win the game here unless he somehow does not attack with everyone but yeah all right bad beats very close to a win here did not cast inferno titan that one turn that we cast gutter snipe which i think was correct uh, given that we prevented the opponent from gaining five life there um, but certainly a very close match and maybe there was a way we can win that uh, if the opponent does not have the banisher priest there uh, we actually could have won but uh yeah let's move on to the next game all right let's take a look at our opening hand we are on a play and this hand is i think a little too slow having two geysers plus a warden is a little too uh, much on the high end although we do have think twice but i think i can do better and this does qualify let's lead with an is it guildgate and now we have a turn three gutter snipe into bolt of Keranos. and two untapped lands which is nice Opponent also playing a uh, Mystic Monastery, so it could be on a similar deck. Let's just play another Guild Gate and pass the turn. And hopefully we don't have to use this Banefire early and can save it for the late game. Alright, so it looks like a at least 4 color deck here. As we draw Think Twice, which is a good draw. Uh, let's see, do we run out the gutter snipe into a removal spell here? Or do we wait? I think waiting is reasonable. Just to try and get an activation out of it before it dies. Um, but given that our opponent's like a clunky 3-4 color deck, he might not have cheap removal. So I'm okay running out the gutter snipe here and maybe throw off the opponent's plan of casting a turn three cultivate who knows all right another tap land and a passing of the turn it looks like so gutter snipe is at least gonna get one activation and i think we just cast a bolt of Karanos to the opponent's face here which is a bit aggressive but we do have vapor snag and on another bolt for removal and Painfire, I think we have to bottom. I want to draw some more lands. And go ahead and attack. A second Banefire would have been good. I mean, it's 3 damage here. Um, but I do want to draw some more lands. Since we do have Think Twice we want to cast. Plus Banefire. Let's see if our opponent plays a creature here. We can Vapor Snag. Instead, it's a Banefire on the Gutter Snipe. So we could save it with our own Vapor Snag here. And I actually don't hate it. 
we deal 1 damage to ourselves, but we also deal to the, to the opponent with the Cutter Snipe trigger, and we get to replay him and have Think Twice up. So, or actually we don't have Think Twice up, we, but we do have Shock up now. Yeah, I think we just run it out and if the opponent tries to kill it again, we have a Shock. And that's 4 damage, opponent's at 7. And then we should have enough burn in hand to kill him. So he does have to gain some life here in some way. Alright, is he gonna pass the turn? I think I'll go for the end of turn shock. Opponent takes 4. Negate, alright. I would rather have him negate the shock than the bolt. Still takes 2 from the trigger. Another gutter snipe is nice, although... We don't have any mana left, so we could play Gutter Snipe, cast a Banefire for zero, uh, trigger both Gutter Snipes, but then our opponent's still not dead. So I think I don't want to expose uh, the Gutter Snipes to an Anger of the Gods. Let's attack, see if this happens. Alright, opponent's at seven. Um... Let's see, I think we can cast a Bolt here. And if this resolves, our opponent will have taken 5 damage, and then a Banefire for uh, 0 actually kills the opponent. But Negate is gonna prevent that. Opponent still takes 2 from the Gutter Snipe trigger, but now the Banefire is not lethal. So we have to pass the turn here. And next turn we can perhaps play Gutter Snipe and cast Think Twice if we draw land. Alright, we draw land, so let's see, I think we can maybe attack first, or wait, how do we sequence this? So we can just cast a Banefire for 4, if the opponent does not have a counter spell he's dead. Um, but I'm thinking, what if he does have a counter spell, what's the best way to play around that? Maybe just Casting Think Twice and flashing it back is good enough, because um, that way we don't lose any cards unnecessarily. So let's attack first, see if the Gutter Snipe connects. And looks like it does. So in this case, we could just play Gutter Snipe. Yeah, let's play Gutter Snipe if he has a response. We can still cast a Think Twice in response as well. And we'll have a Gutter Snipe on the table. And if he doesn't have a response, then this Think Twice will be lethal, regardless of our opponent countering it. So yeah, two triggers go on the stack. If he doesn't have any instant speed life gain, and he doesn't. Alright, so we managed to win that game. So let's move on to the next game. Alright, let's take a look at our opening hand. Which looks pretty good. We've got Young Pyromancer and Think Twice. Just let's keep this. Let's see what the opponent's up to. Forest into Elvish Pioneer. Alright, have fun. Gets to play an extra land this turn. And passes. Let's go ahead and play an Is it Guildgate? Anger of the Gods is an interesting card. So, um,. Depending on what our opponent does here, we could just uh, hold back on the Young Pyromancer and cast Anger of the Gods on 3. If he goes Creature Creature here, I might want to Anger. Sailor Wayfinder's fine. Revealing Arbor Colossus, Elvish Visionary and Elvish Pioneer. So lots of Elves. But I don't think I uh, need to Anger of the Gods this board quite yet. So I'm okay. Let's see. Hmm. Second Anger. Maybe changes things. Yeah, maybe we just wait. Given that we drew the second Anger, I think we kind of have to at least play one next turn. 
and wait a bit on the young pyromancer. So opponent playing mono green it seems like. The only problematic creature in his deck uh, is probably Palaka Worm because it gains their opponent some life and also has trample. But we should be able to handle the small creatures. And an attack for 2 puts us down to 17. And what's the follow up here? Nothing, alright. I guess I'm okay with that. Now the question is, do we go ahead and cast an Anger of the Gods? Huh. Like, our elemental tokens can easily block these 1-1s. One but I don't want to play Young Pyromancer into Anger. This is interesting. I think our opponent might have not played some creatures, uh, maybe uh, fearing an anger, but we do have a second one, so maybe that's a reason to play one here. And if the opponent has more small creatures, we can just cast another anger next turn. Let's see, 5 mana possibly here. There it is. Into nothing. Alright. I guess I'll take it. And we can play Young Pyromancer, keep up blue mana. And play a plane, so we can also cast Think Twice. And green should not have many removal spells. So this young Pyromancer should stay alive for a while. Alright, another Elvish Visionary. Drawing our opponent a card. And... Is it gonna pause the turn, it looks like? Or maybe not. Alright, pauses the turn. Think twice enough turn. Make an elemental and draw card, and shock is not bad. So we can cast a shock here, play a tap land, and flashback thing twice. Don't hate that. Let's shock first, see if this resolves. Opponent could have the pump spell that gives plus one plus one for each forest he controls but did not have it or did not, not want to use it on the Elvish Visionary. So let's go ahead and attack for three. And keep up Think Twice. Alright. Opponent could have Black Worm here, which would be pretty sad. Instead, it's another Elvish Pioneer which is pretty useless now, this card only being remotely playable on turn 1 and then just being terrible. So not a big fan of the card, even in the elf tribal decks, I think you can do better. And opponent passing the turn, let's cast this thing twice and I messed up. Should have paused the timer there and was not quick enough on uh, the flashback happens, uh, so let's see. Opponent has a blocker, don't want to attack the young pyromancer into it. So I guess we just attack with our elementals because I don't want to use a geyser on a 1-1. And we can still flashback thing twice and cast one, although we only have single blue. So instead of playing the land there accidentally, I should have maybe cast a thing twice first to maybe hope and hit a blue source rather than play the mountain we just played there. Oh well. Hopefully it does not matter here. We did miss out on an elemental token this turn. Hunter's Prowess. So gets plus three, plus three and trample. 
Well, I guess we do have to geyser this now. I guess we can think twice first. Yeah. Let's do this first. See what we draw. If our opponent does have the pump spell here as well, then we're in trouble. But we were going to be anyways. Now if we did have double blue for Vapor Snag, that would have been great. Alright, looks like our opponent does not have the pump spell, so can't save the creature from removal. And the Hunter's Prowess did nothing there. Alright, so it looks like we're in a pretty good spot here. So we can attack with everyone. And we still have Skullcrack, Vapor Snag and Think Twice up. So if your opponent plays a Palaka Worm, that's no longer a problem, thanks to Skullcrack. And if he plays another big dumb creature, we can just Vapor Snag it. And damage effects, if you uh, hate them as much as I do, you can just turn them off in the settings. So you don't force your opponent to sit through them and you uh, save a lot of time. Alright, let's see, what do you have? Nothing looks like. So that type of deck could also have uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth, but with no creatures in play, that's not very impressive. So let's cast Skullcrack end of turn here, so we should be able to kill the opponent, cast a thing twice as well. And that's more than enough to uh, kill the opponent on the backswing. Alright, young Pyromancer doing a lot of work here. And luckily your opponent did not have the pump spell for the, um, the elf there. Otherwise our opponent could have drawn a million cards off of the hunter's prowess. Alright, let's move on to a final game. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks pretty good, so I'll keep. We've got two of our creatures and a Skullcrack, so Think Twice would be a great draw here. Anger of the Gods, not bad, but... Uh, let's pause the turn. Now we have to decide if we want to play these creatures or if we want to maybe cast our anger first. And let's see what the opponent's up to. Two Arcane Sanctum. And let's go ahead and... Let's see, we could play our Guild Gate. We could also play out the young Pyromancer here. Not sure what we're up against. I don't hate playing our mountain, so we can keep up Think Twice. And then next turn, play Guildgate and maybe commit the young Pyromancer. And still no play. Huh. Alright. Opponent could have a counter spell or a removal spell. If he has a edict effect, tribute to hunger, I might not want to play the young pyromancer here. Yeah, I think I'll run it out there. See what happens. We still have a gutter snipe. Yeah, there's a tribute, so maybe should have uh, waited another turn to make the token. Let's go ahead and pass. Frontier Bivouac, so at least four colors or five maybe. Think twice. Huh. Think we wait a bit on this gutter snipe to get some value out of it so we can cast a think twice enough turn here while our opponent does the same. And fifth land. It's gonna pass a turn. 
So let's cast Think Twice. And there's a Banefire, which is great, and another Anger, which looks to be a pretty bad card in this matchup, our opponent not playing any creatures. So I think we have to pass one more turn here with Think Twice up before we can play Gutter Snipe and gain any value from it. Opponent's gonna flashback Think Twice. And does he have a play? Another land. And let's cast Think Twice. Land is good. And a bolt. Let's see here. We could wait another turn so we can play Gutter Snipe next turn and have Vapor Snag as well as a Skull Crack up. Don't hate that. So I think I'll pass the turn once again. And their opponent's gonna untap six lands. Does he have a seventh one? Nope, so it looks like he's stuck on six. Let's cast a thing twice. And there's a Boris Gilgate and another Banefire. Alright, so I think it's time to run out the gutter snipe here. And it does resolve. So let's pause the turn. And our opponent does not remove it quite yet. And end of turn, let's see. We could go for a skull crack. Our opponent's not running green, so I don't think that uh, Palaka Worm is a problem. So I don't hate skull cracking here. Deal 5. And there's a tribute. In response, so our opponent would still get to gain the life. So I think I Vapor Snag here to return the, the Gutter Snipe. Which might be a mistake if he plays a big creature we want to Vapor Snag, but... Uh... Alright, Resounding Thunder in response of the Vapor Snag. So our opponent lost uh, 4 to the triggers and then 3 more from the Skull Crack. So we are just in Banefire territory here. I think we start off with a Bolt. And land. Let's see, do we want this? I think we do. With uh, the Banefires we have. Plus we can now play the land and flashback Think Twice. At the end of turn. And two Banefires, unless our opponent has Discard or Life Gain, are going to be enough to kill the opponent. Because they can't be countered. Opponent has his own Think Twice. And it's going to pass the turn here. So let's go ahead and flashback Think Twice. Alright. Young Pyromancer. So I'm thinking how our opponent can still win this. Does have double green technically, so could maybe go next turn Palaka Worm. So go back to 18. So that could be a way he can still survive. Could play Young Pyromancer, cast a bunch of Think Twices here. But I think I just go for it. If he has a way to gain life, he does. It's not like we're dead if he does get to gain some life. Now, Resolute Archangel would be a bummer, because then he gets back to 20 life. But with Tributes in his deck, maybe he doesn't need the Resolute Archangel for life gain. Instead, it's Runescar Demon, and for one mana, I don't think there's any way he can uh, 
get out of Banefire range. Alright, so I think we got there. And Skullcrack should be enough. So let's Banefire for 5, so it can't be countered. Alright. And GG's opponent. So I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day!